So how do I connect my CSS style sheet to my HTML page? Let's have a look at these. We've got this HTML page that I've been working on here and a CSS style sheet. We haven't put anything in here. It's just called style.css. Um, how do we connect these two? Well, before we answer that question, let's actually take a couple steps back and talk about why do we even have two files in the first place? Why do we even have HTML and CSS? I mean, we've managed to do quite a bit with just HTML here. W what is CSS all about? What's the purpose of having this separate file here? And uh, to answer that, let's have a look at the site that we're building, the, the page that we're building here. We've got our nice coming soon page. I've got an image here and I've got, you know, a, a heading here and some text and all right, that's fine. Let's compare it to the page that we're trying to build. And I mean, obviously these, these look really different, right? Well, Yes and no. They look different, uh, like style-wise. The, the colors are different. Let's actually look at what's actually different. The colors are different. The fonts are different. Uh, the font sizes are different. The positioning, the relative positioning of, of the content is different. But when it comes right down to it, the content, the content itself is actually the same, isn't it? Right, you've got exactly the same image. I mean, it looks it looks a bit different. It's been formatted a bit differently here, but that's the same image. It's the same text, you know. Um, it's the same graphics down here. It's the same content. Everything is the same content, and that's the job of HTML. The job of HTML is to provide the meaning of the web page or the document in question. You're you're putting the meaning, uh, the content of your page in the HTML document, okay? And everything else, the decoration, the how it's going to get laid out and the colors and all that stuff, that's just decoration, that's just style, if you will, right? There's no content that's being changed, it's just the style. And the style is what the CSS file controls. Now, it didn't actually always used to be like that. Back in the day when HTML first started, um, people used to, we didn't have style sheets, uh, cascading style sheets, and we used to put all of this in the same page. And, and you know, this might seem simpler, right? But it's actually not, because I don't know if you've been on the web lately, but most websites actually are consist of many more pages than just one single page. There's like hundreds and thousands of pages that make up a website. And so imagine if you had information like, okay, I want a dark red background on my web page, and you somehow encoded, never mind about how it would be encoded, but you somehow encoded that information on each HTML page. So, right, okay, we could do that, right? But then what happens when, let's say you're, you're in charge of the way, you're the webmaster for your company, and then your boss comes, and comes to you and says, you know what? I, you know, I've, I've, I've had a brainwave. I don't want a red background anymore. I want a blue background. And so where does that leave you? Well, I'll tell you, back in the day, that left you cutting and pasting and editing the code for thousands of HTML files just to change a simple background. And as you can imagine, that was kind of a big pain in the rear. And so what style sheets allow us to do is these style sheets this, there's only, you really only need one single style sheet for an entire website. Now, in reality, people often make multiple style sheets and there's technical reasons for that, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial. What, what I want to impress upon you is that, you know, if we were building a full website around here, we would have multiple HTML pages, but we would only need to have one style sheet that would control the look of every single page on your website. And believe me, that's a really, really handy tool to have. And so let me show you how this works. Um, first of all, so let's say you wanted to somehow start building a style sheet that's going to control the look of this site, this page right here. What you need to do is you need to have some way that the browser, when it loads your page, knows where it can go find all those styles. And so we're going to add a tag in here. And we're going to add a tag connecting it to this. And where do you think you're going to put that tag? And I'll give you a hint. Remember back when we were talking about, about the role of head versus the role of body? And we were talking about how the body contains all your content and the head contains all that administrative information? Well, 
telling the browser the location of where to find the style, that's kind of an administrative thing, right? That's just like it's an address. It's not actually going to, you know, that's just pointing in a different direction. So I consider that to be administrative information. And so that's why it makes sense to put it in the head section here. And that's Luckily, that's exactly where it goes. And so the tag that we're going to use is called the link tag. And the link tag is another one of those tags that you know how, remember when I said that tags always comes in pairs? Yeah, this is another one of those tags that kind of breaks that rule. And it does, it does the same thing that the image tag does um, in that it's a self-closing tag like this, okay? Just like, you remember when we talked about the image tag being a self-closing tag? There's no closing tag, but kind of there is because that, that backslash is still there and it's still a self-closing tag. And again, that makes sense because you're not actually having to, you're not applying this link tag to any particular text. It just is. It's just plopped into your head section of the HTML document. So there's a there's three different attributes or attribute value pairs that we need to add to this link tag. And the first one, the first one is, is really simple. It's REL, which stands for relationship. And we're going to put equal. And then got, so there's going to be some value in here. And the value for here is just style sheet. And the reason we type that out is because we are indicating, we're now communicating to the browser that, hey, I'm going to give you a link that you need to link to this document. And the relationship to this document that this link is going to have is it's going to be its style sheet. Does that make sense? I hope so. OK, so we're just saying link is coming up. The relationship is style sheet. Let's move on to the next attribute value pair. The next attribute is called type equals. And in here, it's just text slash CSS. And this is where you're telling the browser, OK. And so this link I'm about to give you, the type of link, the type of file it is, is, oops, I, I typed test. Ignore that. There we go. Text. OK, the type of, of file that I'm going to connect, that I'm going to link to this, it's a text file. And we already knew that, right? Because we know that HTML and CSS files are all text files. They're just plain text files. And, and furthermore, you know, the kind of the subtype of, of text file it is, is a CSS. This is a very specific type of text file. It is a CSS text file. So that's why we say type equals text slash CSS. And finally, probably the most important attribute, although they're all important, is the href attribute. And hey, we've seen this one before, haven't we? This href. Where have we seen that? We saw that in the link tag. Yeah, it's the same attribute. And you'll see different attributes used in different places. So here we go. We need to put the href tag there. And what do we type in here? Well, what's the value? Sorry, did I, did I called it the href tag. It's not a tag. It's an attribute. So what's the value of the href attribute? In this case, it's just the location of the CSS file that you're trying to link to. And now, it is the relative, lo no, bleh, <laughs> relative location. And last time we saw relative locations was down here. Right, and when we talked about that, but we don't have to. We don't have to indicate a folder because, if you recall from here, if we have a look inside here, this style sheet, which we had already made a, a blank one, it's located on the same level as the index.html file. We could have done this differently, and this this is often done with with big websites where they'll have a separate. In addition to having an images folder, they'll have a CSS folder, and inside that CSS folder, they'll put the style sheet, the style sheet, or the style sheets inside there, and they might have different names, and maybe they'll have different style sheets for like mobile use or desktop or whatever. And and so in that case, you would have to actually indicate the relative location by indicating you know the folder name slash the, the file name. But in this case, we can tell it it's safe to just write the file name, file name being style.css, because it's located at the same location. It's in the same directory that we're currently located. So that works fine. So this in its entirety is telling the browser, hey, I got a style sheet coming for you. The style sheet needs to be applied to index.html. Um, the, the, it's the relationship of style sheet, the, the type of file, it's a text file, and it's furthermore, it's, it's a specific type of CSS text file. And, and the name of the file, the location of the file, just look in the same directory you're at and find a file called style.css. And then the browser knows what to do with that. And that's it. Let's save that. And if we reload, nothing really exciting is going to happen here. Why? Well, because we haven't put anything in the style sheet. But that's coming up next. So that's it for this screencast. I hope that you like that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.